You know, I stand before you today as a graduate of CBU and as the current chairman of the Board of Trustees, recognizing that for the past 144 years, the leadership of this institution has just done one remarkable job of educating <clears throat> our students. Today, I'm here to recognize that built on such a strong legacy, we stand together with a vision of where CBU can go in the future. Especially in its powerful, relevant, and influential role in the education of Memphians. I think that's something that we don't appreciate as much in our community. And also for those who come to Memphis. Our board, a few years ago, issued an invitation to John Smarella to be president of the university and its first lay president which is a very important piece to our new history. With John came an authentic appreciation of the culture of CBU's Lasallian tradition. He has created a sense of inclusion and community with the faculty, the students, the administration, and the trustees. He sees opportunities to capture the momentum and expand the institution. Today, we've got some very exciting announcements. And it wouldn't be fair for me to announce those. It needs to be President John Smorella. So welcome up to John up to the stage. Thanks, Mitch, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. I appreciate everyone being here, the, here for this important and historic day in CBU's uh, future. When I came to CBU, I accepted the position understanding that there would be challenges as to all institutions of our type. What I didn't realize and what I've come to to see more and more every day on this campus is the level of commitment and engagement from the board, from our faculty, from our staff, and from our administrators. It's truly a, remark a remarkable love of this institution, a passion for our students, a passion for its success. What I discovered also was that, was that this university has a place in the hearts of every person touched by this campus. We must respond to the ever-changing educational needs of Memphis, specifically as we imagine how the evolution of CBU can continue with its mission of educating and how we can fulfill our mission, educating minds, touching hearts, and remembering the presence of God. This mission is unchanged. What will change going forward is the way we're going to aggressively pursue that mission. Today, representing the board of directors, the students, the faculty, and the alumni, we are here to tell you about Faith in Progress, the campaign for advancing education. I'll say that again, Faith in Progress, the Campaign for Advancing Education. We are here to talk about a $70 million campaign, a campaign that's not all about construction. It's a campaign about programming, a campaign of taking the mission of CBU and responding to the needs of Memphis today and going beyond our 75-acre campus. In order to execute a campaign like this, and one of this magnitude, so much beyond is what this campaign, is, what this university has ever attempted before, we, we, we knew we would need a focused, committed leadership team who could go out and articulate the vision and cultivate benefactors and foundations that share our interest in Memphians and choosing Memphis as a home. We want to make a difference to this community. And this campaign will make the difference we need to this community. And at this time, I'm very happy to introduce our two co-chairs for this campaign. Dave Nelson and Dick Adamski, certainly no strangers to this university, who have agreed wholeheartedly that the future of this, of this community involves CBU, and that this campaign 
It's an opportunity for CBU to make a difference to the Memphis community. I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank Dick and Dave for their willingness to work tirelessly on that campaign. I'd like to turn the podium over to Dick and Dave. So Dick and Dave, thank you for being here, and I welcome you to the Well, I'm going to cover the kind of the history of CBU's fundraising, at least uh, since the 1970s. Uh, I'm a 1962 graduate of the University in Engineering Chemistry, and uh, I was a brother's boy from St. Patrick's High School in Chicago, Illinois. And the Christian Brothers for every, forever changed my life and my family's life. I was a D-plus student when I came here uh, from St. Patrick's High School to, to uh, come to CBU, and CBU proved that a D-plus student can become a rocket scientist. So uh, I graduated and found that I could compete with anybody in the world with the, with the education that I had here at Christian Brothers University. I spent the 12 years in uh, various industries, uh, uh, aerospace industry, food industry, chemical industry, and came back in 1974 to start my own engineering and construction business here in Memphis, Tennessee. And when I came back, I got involved with, with the alumni organization, which was really in its infancy in the 1970s. And I had the good fortune of having a, a best friend, Lance Forstick, who was uh, at that time working with the alumni association and I, I became groomed by Lance uh, to eventually take over uh, as president of the Alumni Association. And uh, we did the first actual alumni fundraising project for the U university in the 1970s. And it was run entirely by the alumni. We did not have, a, have an advancement office uh, here at CBU. And after being groomed to take on those responsibilities, I, I ran the fundraising, uh, co-chaired it. Uh, uh, with Boyd Lee, another uh, graduate from CBU. We ran that for five years. I was brought onto the board. At, at that time, Lance Forstick uh, was board chair, and he, Lance grew me to take his place. And what he had been doing while I was doing alumni fundraising, he had developed a capital and, and endowment campaign. And Dick Trapier of Union Planners Bank, president of Union Planners, and John Shea, a well-known Catholic businessman, were my co-chairs. So. I've been through this routine before, but it was over 25 years ago. And uh, when I left this board chair after serving for 10 years, I challenged the board to do another comprehensive capital endowment campaign while well, I've been waiting 25 years for that to happen. And I can say that I'm, I'm pleasant to be here today to let you know that we're gonna talk about the details of a comprehensive capital endowment campaign. But let me tell you about what I experienced, okay? Number one, we set the original campaign goal at $5 million, and every year we raised the bar. And by the time we were through with that campaign, we had raised $13.5 million. And we set new records for enrollment uh, in the school. We built new buildings, uh, Nolan Engineering. It eventually transformed into uh, getting Murdy Buckman on our board, and uh, we got the, we're in the Buckman School, okay? So what capital endowment programs do is they create excitement, they create programs, they create funding, they allow you to do things that haven't been done before. And the same thing is gonna happen here at the CBU. Uh, we're, when uh, Steve Crispin was brought on board as Vice President of Advancement, he brought in a group of consultants that he had worked with at uh, uh, McMurray College in, in Texas. He had just come off a $39 million capital endowment campaign. And uh, they interviewed 93 people in the community about CBU's uh, ability to raise money in this community. And when they came back and said, we should be able to raise $70 million, I almost fell off my chair, okay? Uh, but the, re uh, uh, the report said that the, the support was there for the university. Now, it's time for us to go do it, all right? And, uh, and, and let me just tell you uh, kind of where, where we've been, okay, just with the planning, okay? This has not been a short-term affair here. We've been in planning for this campaign for almost two years. And uh, I, I can tell you that the leadership team that we have for the campaign, 
uh, and the board of trustees that exists at this university is the best board I've seen. I've worked with seven presidents, and I've worked with every board. I've served 28 plus years on board service here, and this is the best team that CBU has had in place. And hiring John Smorelli was a priority for this board to get a, present, a president who could provide vision and leadership, okay? You can't have a successful capital endowment campaign. I was fortunate to have Brother Theodore Drummond as president of the university, and I was uh, fortunate to have Dick Trapier and John Shea and a great board uh, to raise money in behalf of, of CBU. John has provided that vision uh, for the university of what we could be. His team has put together a strategic plan that deals with every element uh, of the university. It deals with capital programs. It deals with programs that we need to have at the university. Uh, it deals with endowment uh, issues. It deals with the annual fund. And now it's the job of the team to go raise money you know, to accomplish all of these objectives. Now let me tell you just what the, the campaign team has done, okay? Uh, with the campaign leadership, we've received seven-figure gifts from seven different people associated with the campaign team. It's never been anything like that in the history of the university. And uh, uh, within this campaign leadership team, we've already made uh, uh, raised nine million dollars. You know, for, without going to the major foundations that historically have provided you know, the fundraising for our university example. The last capital, uh, capital project uh, of any magnitude we really did was the big, uh, uh, it was the, the substantial capital project in the last 25 years has been a new science building and a renovation of CC Hall, okay? And that project was $14 million. More than 70% of that money came from foundations that have historically supported the university. Uh, where we're at today is we've raised almost $31 million for the campaign uh, without the foundations that have historically supported this union, the program. So, <laughs> so it's all about having a, a, a vision it's all about having a great strategic plan. It's all about having a great team. And this board uh, is almost 50% alumni now, the highest level ever. And there you can see the passion to deliver the product, okay? So that's the history. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Dave, and Dave is gonna tell you about the program. Thank you, Dave. Thank you everyone that's here today. I want to want to tell you on a summer day, a hot summer day like that, in the summertime, people warned us, don't have your, your big announcement in the summertime with vacations. And we said, you know, they also told us not to do a $70 million capital campaign either. So uh, we're proving them wrong on all fronts. For all those that can't be here today, we have CBU TV in the audience. We're broadcasting this uh, on a simulcast live all throughout the world. And people all around the country and, and overseas are able to see this and join us here today. So it's an exciting time for this announcement. You know, why am I here? You know, I, I'm not like Dick. I am not a graduate from the university. But there's several reasons that put me here. First is my experience in being educated by the LaSalle brothers in high school. Where I witnessed firsthand the dedication to education and the commitment to service. It's been that dedication to education and commitment to service that Christian Brothers has had an impact in our city for the last 140 years. And at this time, I think it's appropriate if we could have all the Christian Brothers in the room, please stand and be recognized for all your great services that you've done. Thank you. Thank you so much, and for the people back home watching on CBU TV, we want to thank you brothers as well for all the hard work and dedication that you've shown. My first real experience with CBU had to come in the mid-90s. When my brother and I were starting a business in Cairoville, 
and two thirds of our core team were CBU grads. With their leadership, we were able to create a company that took it from a small little firm in Cargillville to an international leader in our industry. I quickly gained an appreciation for the type of students that CBU was turning out. In 2002, I was approached by then brother president, brother Stan Sopchak. He asked me if I'd be, be willing to consider serving on the CBU board. I was honored and said I'd be happy to. And at that point, I was able to see firsthand, take a business point of view and see firsthand the business model that a not-for-profit private university had to work under. And I gotta tell you, as an entrepreneur, that is a, not the most favorable business models that you wanna work under. But for some reasons, Christian Brothers have been able to make it work in our city for the last 140 years. During the next nine years of serving on the board, I served under four presidents. And during that time, the university progressed. We moved forward. Maybe not at a record pace, but we continue to put one foot in front of the other. During that time on the board, I served with some fabulous people. People in our community that really showed me what it meant to give time, talents, and treasure with a passion. And these people are people like Lance Forstick, Bob McInerney, Joyce Mulroney, Willis Willie. I could go on and name so many more. But this guy next to me, the guy that I'm co-chair with, Dick Godomsky, stands, and I've got to tell you, Dick, that for those nine years when I was on the board, watching you and seeing how you operated with such love and passion for this school inspired me and still inspires me to today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you there is probably no better return on investment than CBU. And that probably goes back to the, to the, uh, the toughness that the Christian brothers have been always in, in, with their fiduciary responsibilities. When you look at things, when we talk to employers out there, they tell us what they're looking for with regards to their students as far as programs. And we're gearing those programs to meet those needs. Because we recognize, and they are starting to recognize, that 80% of our graduates stay in the Memphis area. Did you know that 90% of our students receive financial aid that covers approximately 50% of our tuition costs? They, we do that with endowments and with other funding. Also, 93% of our surveyed grads have, have, have an actual job when they graduate, which is huge. Another aspect that I think that speaks to the soul of, of the LaSalle mission is that over 40%, sometimes up to close to 50% of our students qualify for some government assistance. These are people that, that need this, this education. And yes, we are a Catholic university, but do you realize less than 30% of our students are Catholic? I think Bishop Stein said it best when he said, they come to us not because they are Catholic, but because we are Catholic. Christian Brothers educates people of all faiths and all backgrounds to prepare young people for the challenges of tomorrow. <coughs> this campaign, ladies and gentlemen, is truly going to be transformational. So I'm going to tell you, if you believe in Memphis, if you believe in CBU, if you believe in education, you need to be part of this. You need to be involved in this campaign, and you must support it. On behalf of our board, on behalf of our administration and professors and staff, we thank you for your time that you've given us today. Before I turn it back over to, to Dick for some final comments, uh, I did want to make a couple of housekeeping notes. In your program, it says that we're going to be meeting out in the, uh, the quad for uh, a reception. Well, the 97 degree, 108 degree heat index is, has allowed us to move that into one of our newest buildings. Cooper Wilson building, so we'll be uh, be moving it into there in just short order. So again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. Good things are ahead at CBU. Did it? As we uh, market the capital and endowment campaign, in reality, we, we are mar marketing the operating team and the staff and the faculty of Christian Brothers University. And I, I just want to recognize uh, some of the operating team that I've had the pleasure of working with over these last two years. Uh, 
when John came in, he kind of took his time to kind of determine what needed to be done. Uh, but uh, over the last two years, he's really done it, okay? I mean, he's basically changed the operating leadership of the university. And uh, uh, he, he brought in Steve Christman, uh, who brought a tremendous experience and advancement to the university. Uh, and uh, really put together, he put together the whole plan for a capital endowment campaign uh, with his team. Carolyn Head, our new CFO from UTCHS, uh, come in and hit the ground running with the experience and background. It's, it's, you can't beat having professionals who've done it before that bring that experience that we don't have and they just lighten up our world, you know, over, over here. Uh, in student life, uh, Tim Doyle completely in about a year and a half turned around the whole student life situation here. Our, our, we have a waiting list to get in our residence halls. And that, that's never happened in my experience here at, at CBU. But uh, him and his team have, have put together a, a vibrant student life program. And when we build a student and community life center, it's even going to be better. But, uh, uh, Scott Geis and Kelly Hefner uh, worked on the retention program at CBU, and we set an all-time record for retention freshman sophomore year last year with the what they call the QEP and and, and a better job at, at advising our services. And I can't say enough about our rock star Amy Ware in career services. Uh, in in a matter of uh, less than two years, she's got uh, I think I think it's now 270 companies are recruiting CBU students. Why do we have 93% career placement? Uh, Amy has been a big part uh, of making that happen and uh, deserves kudos uh, for the job. And she will guarantee every student an internship, okay? Now, they may not keep their internship, <laughs> but she will guarantee getting you one. <laughs> it's up to the student to keep his internship. Now, I'll tell you, I used it, I have, I have two students that I was working with, and she had internships for both of them, two days, two days. Uh, Brian Summer, new director of athletics, most cogent presentation of athletic needs I've seen you know, since I've been at CBU, and that's, you know, about 40 years worth. Tony Ross with the CAPS program, completely revised the CAPS uh, uh, program at CBU, and Ann Kenworthy, uh, with the work that she's done in enrollment, all-time record freshman enrollment uh, last year. And Wendy Sumner went through with the branding effort of CBU. CBU's logo is all over the city. <laughs> and uh, we, are, we are recognized as a, as a college uh, you know, on the go, and uh, we're in the top 10 list of, of businesses to watch in, in, in Memphis, Tennessee today. So I commend the leadership of John, his operating team, the faculty and staff, you guys are what makes it happen you know, every day, but you make my job so easy because I believe in, in what you're doing. And when I talk to the kids that are here today, they say exactly what I said 50 plus years ago. I got a great education at CBU. It was a family nurturing environment and they, they prepared me to be the best I could be and uh, made my, my life successful. And you're doing it today. So, uh, the capital part of the campaign, the campaign is a $70 million campaign and almost half of it is capital, okay? Now, I'll, I'll be very honest, what I would like to have built first is the Student Life Center. <laughs> but, but uh, Rosa Deal, the Spear Foundation, and Weedy Phillips, now, let me tell you about those three people, okay? Rosa, everybody here knows she taught here for uh, about 40 years, I think, just about. Uh, and uh, she married a, a GI, came to Memphis, was our first female uh, teacher at the university, taught in the language uh, department, and uh, she left us uh, over $5 million estate, okay? The Spear Foundation, Wayne Spear was a, a trustee I served with for, for many years. I love Wayne, very outspoken. Uh, he contributed a lot to our cash because anytime he used a cuss word, he, he had to pay for it. I got, lot, I got a lot of donations from him that way. And then Weedy, uh, it's Louise Phillips, uh, but their nickname was Weedy. 
those three people, that's uh, all former, uh, two former trustees and a faculty, have left us the capital to build the new Rosa Deal School of Arts. And if you go outside right now, the old building is being demolished. Okay, so that that money is there to begin that that particular building. Now, that's about a nine million dollar capital project. The Student and Community Life Center is about a fifteen million dollar capital project. Uh, improvements to athletics, about $2 million, about $2 million for computer uh, art, uh, upgrades and, and wireless capacity, uh, uh, over $5 million for improvements uh, to the library, and we're going to make it a library and student success center, and, uh, uh, and when you add that all up, it's uh, a little over $30 million, uh, close between $30 and $35 million, so half the campaign is capital. The other half of the campaign is programs uh, and uh, uh, endowment and annual fund, okay? The capital programs uh, are, are, are um, being marketed primarily to the major foundations, but we'll be marketing to everybody. Uh, everybody will have a piece of those actions. Uh, but uh, like I said, we have not gone to the major donors who supported us in our past. Uh, uh, but we'll be marketing to them uh, capital and, and programming uh, operations. So uh, I uh, let me just check my notes here. Uh, I think I've covered. I the number. Uh, well, the, so I, I, we've we've raised about thirty-one point six million dollars. You know.